Welcome, movie fans, to this brief analysis of the original Jurassic Park. Spoiler alert, this movie does have dinosaurs. This is one of the earlier scenes depicting the dinosaurs out in the wild. It gives us an idea of the scope of the park and how vast this world is. But first we meet doctors Ellie Sattler and Alan Grant. Here you can see by their attire and their surroundings, they're used to getting their hands dirty and working out in the field. They can take care of themselves. They're the center of the group. And here they are not only larger than everyone else, they are closer to the camera and above everyone else, quite literally, which implies that they are above everyone else in their social status. They're the most important people in this scene. Here our archaeologists see living dinosaurs for the first time. Pay attention to the emotions of the music and the camera angles as the doctors become very small in the world they thought they knew. Alan, this species of veriform has been extinct since the Cretaceous period. Ellie's I mean, still this thing trapped is in her own thoughts <laughs> until Alan pulls her out. She escapes her box, her small world. The slanted ground is symbolic of their world's tilting. The camera looks up as they do, representing how small they feel in comparison to this new discovery. The world is bright and full of hope. Lots of lighting. It's... it's a dinosaur. Uh -huh. <laughs> Lots of smiles. Tear the rule book on it. Cold-bloodedness, it doesn't apply. It's totally wrong. Music. It's a warm-bodied creature. This thing doesn't live in a swamp. This thing's got, what, a 25, 27-foot neck? A Brachiosaurus 30. We're gonna make a fortune with this place. Clock the T-Rex is 32 miles an hour. Stuck in his small box thinking about money. T-Rex? Mm-hmm. You said you've got a T-Rex? Uh-huh. Say again. <gasps> we have a T-Rex. In uh, this scene, put your, put John your Hammond <laughs> has just become <laughs> more important Dr. Grant. and more powerful My idea, Dr. than Dr. either of our paleontologists. Well, yes. In this land, to Jurassic Park. he's the biggest deal. They do move in herds. How'd you do this? I'll show you. We enter the park through giant doors that remind us how small we actually are. We enter a state-of-the-art museum and look up at the vastness of this brand new facility that's so new it's still being worked on. We're treated to some animated storytelling that reminds us that we are in a fantasy world. Before we see where baby dinosaurs come from and are introduced to the possible dangers that await us in this movie. And how do you know they're all female? Or somebody yeah. go out in the park and pull up the dinosaur's skirts? We control their chromosomes. It's really not that difficult. Yeah. All vertebrate embryos Ian are Malcolm inherently female. Ian starts out anyway. above they everyone else an extra hormone at the start of the, the scene right as he asks an intelligent male, question, but we gets simply deny smaller them. It's not possible. as he's one schooled thing the history of evolution has taught us. It's that life scientist. will not be contained. Life breaks free. It expands to new territories and crashes larger. through barriers painfully, maybe even dangerously. As he makes but, his point. Uh, well, there it is. We're looking up at his uh, mind. You're implying that a group composed entirely of female animals will 
breed? No, I'm, I'm simply saying that life uh, As Ian is literally way. under a spotlight, Dr. Alan Grant steps into the shadows and asks an ominous question. What species is this? Uh, it's a velociraptor. He holds in his hands the dinosaur he fears most. The red raptors. As the baby monster begins to screech, the music turns ominous, implying danger. And in traditional storytelling tropes, a storm rolls in, turning the island dark. We're then reintroduced to the source of our movie's chaos in his natural environment, before everything goes wrong. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.